Sony revealed a lot of future plans during a special business segment briefing, as they like to call it, with highlights including new TV show announcements, with Yes Horizon being one of them. We learned their game output goals till 2026, but also that two secret unannounced games are still planned for a launch before April 2023. So that's probably next to God of War Ragnarok, which has been raided in Korea, indicating that a launch this year could still happen. For comparison, Horizon Forbidden West was raided in November and launched three months later. So Ragnarok in September, October, it's still in the cards. We got a ton to get over, of course, if you are excited for the future of PlayStation, then totally leave a like on the video to show your support, subscribe for all the big PlayStation news, and let's go. Okay, let's start with a big one. Next to the Lost of Us HBO show, the Ghost of Tsushima movie, we're also getting a Horizon TV show on Netflix. Yes, really. No info on whether it will be live action or animated. I think they're going the live action route, similar to The Witcher, although an arcane style horizon show might actually be cooler. Netflix will have their Geeked Week starting June 6th, where they usually reveal new projects, so maybe that is where we see the first sort of image or get some info on the Horizon TV show. We'll keep you posted here. It could also, of course, be that this is still far off. And the God of War Amazon Prime TV show has also been officially confirmed. There was already a leak by Deadline, noting that the Expanse creators and executive producers Mark Fergus and Hawk Ostby and the Wheel of Time executive producer and showrunner Rafe Judkins were in charge of the project. And it seems like this at least will be a live action adaption. And there should also be a Gran Turismo show coming as well, but no service announced for that. Like Sony's really going crazy and that kind of makes sense after Uncharted that did super well and it can also have a huge impact on the games with The Witcher TV show increasing the playtime of The Witcher 3 by a ton. But yeah, I just overall hope that these shows turn out to be great. Fingers crossed for that. Now moving on to games. They first hype up that PlayStation games have never been better. Also highlighting some future titles, including third party. Most notably Avatar Frontiers of Pandora. Because Sony has some sort of deal with Hogwarts Legacy and the Square Enix titles. But Avatar was never announced. So maybe we get like a branded state of play for that game and other promotions as well. Now this chart is very interesting. They are namely going to invest big time into new IP. In financial year 19, so between April 2019 and March 2020, 77% of the investment was into existing franchises, while only 23% was into new IP. So that's already shifting to 66% and 34% in this current financial year, and then by financial year 25, so April 2025 until March 2026, they want a 50-50 split between investment in existing and a new IP. And that is awesome, and it also kind of makes sense. I think Naughty Dog is going to do a new IP this generation. Santa Monica, next to God of War, is working on another game, which is very likely a new IP. Sony Band is working on a new IP after Days Gone. And I, by the way, have a really big video going in depth on what the PlayStation Studios are working on going up in the next few days. I think you will like it, so stay tuned for that. Also really interesting is that around the 50% of the PlayStation Studios portfolio will be on mobile and PC by the end of March 2026. Which is actually not really weird, because Sony revealed sales numbers for their PC games and it's pretty wild. Horizon sold 2.4 million units with a revenue of 60 million dollars which is like most of the game's budget already and this excluding the PS4 sales. And Days Gone and God of War, which of course launched later, are also close to 1 million units sold. And this financial year they expect around 300 million dollars in revenue from PC, which is way more than the 80 million they had the year before. So we can expect a ton of PC launches in the next 12 months and if we go to the GeForce Now leak, which has been proven right many times before, I think we see the list of what we can likely expect. Horizon Forbidden West, one year after the PS5 launch, I can see it happen and that would of course still be in this financial year. Ghost of Tsushima seems like a really safe bet as well, maybe the next few months already. They probably mean Ratchet & Clank 2016 here 
and Helldivers 2 is a completely new game. We could totally see that too. And by the way, while editing, Returnal was found in the Steam database. So that is likely coming very soon. And Uncharted 4 and The Lost Legacy are dropping on PC very soon as well. Like, we can expect most titles to end up on PC with even some live service games dropping a day one. And that's the other major takeaway Sony is going all in on live service games and they're already expecting to drop two unannounced live service titles by March 2023 and this does not include Destiny 2 as part of the Bungie acquisition and it is alongside MLB The Show which is currently their first and only live service game. Now one of them has to be that standalone Lost of Us Factions multiplayer title right? Seems like the right time to launch that and I mentioned Helldivers 2 which could totally be part of this as well but i personally hope it's that second guerrilla games project i checked the linkedin from the game director that is on this game he has now been working on it for four years and four months which seems like more than enough then in the next financial year, so between April 2023 and March 2024 they expect three extra live service titles four in the year after that and they want to reach 12 in total by March 2026. And we can also look at their investment and we see that by March 2026 they expect 55% will go into live service games while they still remain committed to traditional games with 45% and I don't think we should worry about this. I don't think that the increased focus on live service games means that we will see less single player experiences. It just makes sense for Sony to try and be in that other massive market as well and I always point to Ghost of Tsushima Legends as like the prime example of how it can be done. That separate multiplayer mode did not hurt the single player story of Jin at all. So if all these multiplayer projects in familiar PlayStation IPs are just completely separate, we can still get the good stories but also play co-op with our friends in these games that we love. I think it's a win-win. We also learned a bit more about PlayStation VR 2, namely that we should expect more than 20 games ready for the launch and they use an image of Horizon Call of the Mountain. So I think this Horizon VR game is very likely going to be a launch title which wasn't confirmed before. And these 20 plus games will be from first party and third party and I'm holding my fingers crossed for Half-Life Alex. I really hope that that's coming and also some like PSVR 1 games that I missed. I would love to play Blood and True for example. Still no date for PSVR 2, maybe the end of this year, early 2023. At least the lineup seems promising. Now real quick on mobile because that's also going to be increasingly bigger for Sony. It could only be that they acquire a mobile studio so they can bring their place in IP to Android and iOS at a quicker pace. We see many third party developers of course already do that and it seems to be a plan going forward to have like a legit uncharted mobile game that isn't some like stupid temple run clone i'm curious to hear your take on these future plans for playstation in the comments subscribe of course for way more ps5 videos including a big one on the secret games coming to playstation very soon a like on this video would really help me out and check out my previous video on the playstation plus revamp that is coming very soon as well by clicking on the screen for now i'll speak to you soon goodbye